What up, what up, what up? <laughs> so, all right, so I wanted to do another Why I Left Atlanta. It's just a series now. <clears throat> I just talk about what I saw in Atlanta when I lived there. Why I don't live there no more. I don't, I'm really not sure what to expect when you people want to go back to Atlanta. Uh, do I want to go back to Atlanta? I would live on the outskirts, but it's too metropolitan for me anymore. I don't, I don't want to deal with traffic. You know, if I lived anywhere near Atlanta, it'd be 20 minutes on the outskirts. It'd be in, uh, they got a little university I wanted to go in. Um, I forgot what it's called. A little suburb I wanted to live in. But, you know, they're kind of racist out there. So it's like... I don't want to live with a bunch of people who don't want me to be there. You know what I mean? Because I mind my business. But um, nonetheless, I do want to talk about. Uh, okay, so I talked about the women in Atlanta, and uh, there's, being that there's pretty much every nationality in Atlanta, uh, in the world, in Atlanta, you're gonna see all type of gorgeous. I mean, it's a rainbow. It's a plethora. It is just ridiculous of. Like, this is the only time I actually... Listen, I've been to Ebony fashion shows. I've talked to those models face-to-face. -face. I wasn't stunned by them. I was just like, okay, they're pretty. They're talking to me. It's not a big deal. When I went to Atlanta, and I walked in the mall, and I seen every rainbow of beauty, like, color of beauty. It was just ridiculous. I stopped in my tracks and was just like... <laughs> What do you do? And I asked a dude who was working at Foot Locker. He was just, you know, standing by the store. I was like, dude, like, what do you do? He said, about what? I said, there's so many beautiful women. He said, you choose one. Now, here's, here's, okay, so, okay, so people are, Atlanta's a black city, you know, and they're pumping this whole black city thing up. Atlanta's a black city because a lot of people migrated towards Atlanta for one reason or another. You know, either for music, uh, to get into some type of uh, movie industry. Uh, at one time, it might have been jobs. When I was down there, I didn't have a stellar job. I worked two jobs for a temporary service. I got fired uh, from one job, and they fired me from both temporary. For I, I worked for two jobs for one temporary service. I lost one job. I automatically lost the other one. They didn't even think about it. So it wasn't a huge mecca for for jobs for me. You know, I went down there. We had a uh, we had a job fair, and thousands and thousands and thousands of people showed up, dressed up. You know, everybody, and it was just ridiculous. So it's not you're not moving down there because there's. A lot of jobs you may move down there for a particular job let's say that you have a degree in something you know and you specialize like if you have a business management degree I don't scoff at that degree if somebody has a business already and they want that degree to back them up but if you're just going to get a business management degree get that with some type of specialty added to it you know what I'm saying? Don't just get a business management degree. It's like getting a biology degree. You know, if you get a biology degree, you might want to go ahead and add, like, get a master's in, you know, biology of something. So you are now a specialist at something. Other than that, you'll, uh, you might work in a lab. Okay, that's cool. If that's all you want to do. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you could be a, you know, a lab tech or whatever with that. But, you know, be a specialist at, at something. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting a healthcare management degree. You know, I'm probably going to get a, a health information management degree also. You know, so I'm going to be a specialist at something. I'm getting into uh, healthcare fraud. So if there's a master's in that vein of investigative, you know, healthcare fraud, that's where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? I'll be a specialist at something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be the person, the go-to person for that department. You know what I'm saying? So, that's all I can say about that. Uh, because in Atlanta, you have a lot of people who have degrees. You know? There's, you know, like, four or five HBCUs 
all right next to each other, literally. You know what I mean? So it's not like you're going down there and, you know, just you being a you who you are, you're going to get this fabulous. Listen, that doesn't work for everybody. It just doesn't. If you move to Atlanta, you've got to have a game plan. I mentioned this before. But if you're a young person and you got, okay, if you're a young person, there's so many ways of making money now. Uh, you know, there are some guys who are making 10000 a month just on off of IG, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just off of YouTube videos or Vine. Hey, if that's your hustle, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? That's how you get your money. You're making more money than a lot of older people. I don't have an issue with that, not unless you're going around like boot gang and destroying people's stuff. I have an issue with that. Like, that dude is not a celebrity to me. A dude is a clown and somebody's going to, you know, deal with him when he comes across the wrong person and he destroys their stuff. Like, that's a bad idea. If that's how you're making your money, you better be careful because somebody's going to catch on to it and you might get, it. you might get, you know, somebody's going to deal with you. Uh, but nonetheless, you have a lot of people out here who are funny and they're making good money just being a funny person and yada, yada, yada. So there are a lot of different avenues. Listen, when I talk on, on YouTube, I don't make a lot of money off of YouTube videos, but every cent counts to me. Every day I make, you know, maybe, you know, in between 70 to a dollar 15 every day. But that, like I said, that's my dollar 15 to 70 cents to a dollar 15. And eventually it's going to equal a hundred bucks and I'll get a YouTube check. Like, <laughs> like I don't try to master YouTube, but I do it because one, it's an outlet Two, I get paid for it. You know what I'm saying? So that, like I said, you got to have that type of hustle. But when it comes to going to a major place like Atlanta, you're not going to live off of, you know, a dollar a day. You need to have yourself an already established income or be walking into a job. Not going down there looking for a job. Walking into that job. Okay? I was going to make this about women, but forget it. Uh, you know, I was going to talk about, you know, the style of what I saw down there. But I want to talk business with you guys because... I, you know, for the people who watch my video, you know, I'm 50 years old, so I've been through a lot, you know, and the things that I've been through, you know, uh, my father went through it when he was a younger dude, you know what I'm saying? So I'm telling you guys so you can have a heads up on uh, one culture, fashion, and, and money. Like, you can't even think straight when your stomach's hungry. You can't. You cannot... You can't think straight. And, and like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on in Atlanta. There's there's some good. There's a whole lot of bad going on that, down there. There's a lot of good going down there. And if you go down there with your pockets nice, especially if you just, you just graduated, make sure that you vet the market. Make sure that you understand the market that you're going into. Uh, you know, and a lot of young people have these high hopes and dreams. We all do it. Everything's going to work out for me. And then when you get your dreams crushed, a lot of people can't handle that. Like they get crushed, crushed. Like I, I got fired one time and I was depressed for six months. Like I didn't want to talk to my girlfriend. I lost my girlfriend. I lost my job. I, I didn't care about a single thing. But when I finally snapped out of that, I realized that, for one, that's not my job. It's their job. And they let me be there for a while until they took it away. When they felt like taking it away, it was gone. I had no control of that. It wasn't, it, it, it wasn't, it, it's not mine. I don't own it. So when you say what your job is, you know, this is my job. You know, is this is my job. Uh, no. That's, that's an occupation. You don't own that job. You are temporarily occupying that space until they want somebody else. And when you have that in mind, you always have a contingency plan. Like if they come out, supervisor comes out. This has happened to me before. It's happened. To, like he came out uh, and they was less like the whole floor is fired. I've seen that happen more than once where they were just like, hey, everybody here is going to be leaving. And that was it. And my boss that was telling us that ended up driving a cab. Because I saw him. I jumped in the back of his cab. I said, you fired me. He said, I didn't fire you. The whole floor terminated. 
you know, <laughs> uh, and I ain't talking about three people. I'm talking about like 40, 50 people gone and work their, their way down. So I'm just saying, you know, you go, you get comfortable, you go to work, get up. Uh, and I know a lady who was comfortable with her job. She called me. She said, Tony, they fired me. I was like, why? They just, I mean, they just walked in and just fired this woman. And she almost broke down. But she had good family support and, wish, and she also had a degree. She had a degree in healthcare. And I'm not pushing healthcare, but that's the one thing where it's always going to be needed. But basically, she had a degree and she was like, fine, I'll go and be an entrepreneur. But you know what she started doing? She started selling insurance. She became a uh, over the road uh, life insurance agency and a next uh, late agent. And the next time I heard from her, she doubled her income and she goes on vacation whenever she wants. She puts her she put her kids through college. She got grandkids now, and she's doing great. She's just like I doubled my income, and it worked out to her favor that they fired her. And I wanted to uh, like I want to let y'all know like. Like, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, especially in the A. There's a lot of people with degrees. There's a lot of people who feel like they're special. Listen, you have to make yourself special. And you don't have to make yourself special to them. Like, don't work for them. Do not be in that mind state. Don't be around anybody who has that mind state. I work for them. No, you are always self-employed regardless of what your W-2 says. You have to keep that in mind. You have to keep in mind, I always got two or three contingency plans. I always got two or three hustles going on. Uh, I got a tight network of, you know, two or three people that we are all in the same frame of mind. We are all hustling. This is what we do. You know, we all got, you know, it, 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 you because you got to look at it. Even if somebody gave you a job right now and said, you're going to make 60, 70,000 a year, you'd be like, I'm going to make sixty or 70000 until you decide I don't belong here anymore. You might not even get to see. You might not even get to the first paycheck. I had a company that didn't even want to pay me. They just shut the doors when we came for our paycheck. So I'm just saying, stuff like that happens. And they would not open the door and give us our money. We never got our money for that. I'm just saying. You have to have something to fall back on. And that something has got to be you and your intelligence. A degree definitely helps. If you don't have a degree, you got another type of hustle. Family definitely helps, but they need to be on board with what you're doing. They don't need to be taken away from you. They need to be adding to what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? And what you're doing. If they not, then skip them. I'm not trying to hear that. You can't borrow money from me every time I talk to you. No. Hang, I'm hanging up. Bye. Love you. Bye. You know, Jesus wept. Gotta go. I'm just saying, you gotta have these things in frame of mind. You just do. Now, you know, your family needs help every now and then. Everybody needs help. You know, that's every now and then. You help them, they help you. But y'all have to have the same goal in mind. If they're not going anywhere and you see every year you're not going nowhere. No, I, I'm, I no, I can't keep doing this with you. You know what I'm saying? The same one with your friends, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. I don't care, your mom. I don't care who it is. If they're draining your pockets and it's a constant thing and they're not helping you build, cut yourself financially off from them. Get out, like the movie Get Out. Get out. Get away from that atmosphere because you will go broke doing that. You really, really will. You have to have your hustle game in mind. And Atlanta is a place that's full of opportunities if you know how to hustle, if you know how to get out there and you know how to, like, I worked 16 hours a day. But what happened to me is I worked for someone. I wasn't working for me. I was like, yeah, I got these two jobs. I'm comfortable. I can do whatever, you know, take care of. I know that was a wrong frame of mind. It shouldn't have been like that. If I was working 16 hours for me, but I was at that job, I wouldn't have never fell down when they fired me because I would have always had something else going on. You know what I'm saying? I got four or five ways I make money now. So when I, I'm always listening to how much do I, money do I got in the bank. And I'm always trying to make that up. I'm always online looking for something. And I'm 50 years old. I'm always looking for something else. Okay, I just spent $200 on bills. I need that $200 back. I'm just saying you have to have that in, a, in that frame of mind or you'll go broke. It's your boy Tone 202, man. God loves you. Stay up.